When someone is critically ill and struggling to breathe, doctors may turn to advanced life support systems to keep them alive. You've probably heard of ventilators, but what about ECMO? Is it just another type of ventilator or something more? In this video, we're diving into the life or death difference between these two powerful medical tools. Understanding how ECMO works and how it compares to a traditional ventilator could completely change how you see modern critical care. So if you're a healthcare professional or just someone who wants to understand how we keep patients alive when their lungs fail, stick around. This is a concept you won't want to miss. Let's start by clarifying a common misconception. ECMO is not a ventilator. Although both are used to support patients with respiratory failure, their methods, mechanisms, and even their purposes are fundamentally different. A mechanical ventilator supports breathing by pushing air into the lungs and allowing passive exhalation. It depends on some level of lung function to exchange gases oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. ECMO, which stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, bypasses the lungs entirely. It takes over the gas exchange process outside of the body, allowing the lungs to rest or recover, or in some cases, allowing physicians to manage severe disease while other treatments take effect. To understand ECMO, you need to understand what happens when the lungs or heart can no longer do their job. In a healthy body, oxygen is inhaled into the lungs, absorbed into the bloodstream, and delivered to every organ. Carbon dioxide, a waste product, is carried back to the lungs where it is expelled via exhalation. When this system fails, the body is starved of oxygen, and dangerous levels of CO2 accumulate. This can cause irreversible organ damage and death in a matter of minutes to hours if not corrected. That's where life support systems come in, and a ventilator is often the first step. It's a machine that can breathe for a patient, either assisting their efforts or completely taking over if they're sedated or in a coma. Tubing is placed into the trachea, and the machine rhythmically pushes a set volume of air into the lungs. It's precise, programmable, and incredibly effective in many cases. However, ventilators rely on the lungs' ability to expand contract, and allow gas exchange at the alveolar level. If the lungs become too stiff, filled with fluid, or otherwise unable to exchange gases effectively, simply blowing air in and out won't be enough. That's where ventilators reach their limit, and ECMO becomes an option. ECMO works by diverting blood from the body into a machine that removes carbon dioxide and adds oxygen, then returns the freshly oxygenated blood back into the patient's circulation. This is done using large catheters inserted into major veins and arteries, typically in the neck or groin. The blood flows through a membrane oxygenator, essentially an artificial lung, and then is pumped back into the body. The lungs are still there, but they can rest. In some cases, the heart is also failing, and ECMO can assist with circulation, taking pressure off the heart while maintaining adequate blood flow to vital organs. There are two main types of ECMO, venovenous, VV, and veno-arterial, VA. Venovenous ECMO supports only the lungs. Blood is drawn from a vein, oxygenated, and returned to a vein. The heart continues to pump, but the lungs are given a break. Veno-arterial ECMO supports both the heart and lungs. Blood is drawn from a vein and returned to an artery, effectively bypassing both organs and taking over circulation and oxygenation. This is typically used in cases of cardiac arrest or profound cardiogenic shock. While ECMO may sound like the ultimate solution, it's important to recognize that it's not without risks or complications. It's an incredibly invasive procedure that requires a highly trained team, advanced equipment, and constant monitoring. Bleeding, infection, blood clots, and stroke are all potential complications. Anticoagulation must be carefully managed to prevent clotting in the circuit while avoiding hemorrhage in the patient. Additionally, ECMO doesn't treat the underlying cause of respiratory or cardiac failure. It simply buys time. The goal is always to correct the underlying problem, whether it's an infection, trauma, or a chronic disease, so the patient can eventually be weaned off the support system. 
Another important point to understand is that patients on ECMO are often still on a ventilator at the same time. The ventilator may be set to lower pressures and volumes, what we call lung protective settings, to minimize the risk of ventilator-induced lung injury. This strategy allows the lungs to heal while ECMO handles the gas exchange. It's not a matter of choosing one or the other. In critical care, they are often used together in a highly coordinated approach. ECMO was once considered a last-ditch effort used only when all else failed. Over the past two decades, however, advances in technology and technique have made it a more commonly accepted option, especially in specialized centers. It gained wider recognition during the COVID-19 pandemic when many patients developed severe ARDS that couldn't be managed with a ventilator alone. ECMO offered a lifeline to patients who otherwise had no options, and survival rates in some cases improved dramatically with its use. It's also used in pediatric and neonatal intensive care units. In newborns with congenital diaphragmatic hernia, meconium aspiration syndrome, or persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn, ECMO can be life-saving. For these tiny patients, the challenges are even greater. Smaller vessels, more delicate organs, and a greater need for precision. But the principle remains the same. When lungs or hearts can't keep up, ECMO can step in. So, to answer the original question, no. ECMO is not a ventilator. It's something more, and it represents the outer edge of what modern medicine can do to support life. Ventilators assist the lungs. ECMO replaces them. Ventilators require the lungs to do some of the work. ECMO takes over completely when the lungs can't do it at all. While they may be used together, they are fundamentally different in purpose and function. Understanding this distinction isn't just academic. It matters for care decisions, resource allocation, and patient outcomes. For students and healthcare workers, grasping how ECMO functions opens the door to a deeper appreciation of critical care. For families of patients, knowing what ECMO is can provide clarity during extremely emotional and high-stakes moments. And for those passionate about medicine, it's a powerful example of just how far we've come in our ability to support the human body when it's on the brink of collapse. Yet, ECMO is not a cure. It is a bridge, sometimes to recovery, sometimes to transplantation, and sometimes, unfortunately, to the realization that the body can't recover. Decisions about using ECMO must be made carefully, weighing the potential for meaningful recovery against the risks and realities of critical illness. That's why it's typically used in specialized centers with ethics committees, ECMO-trained teams, and well-defined criteria for initiation and discontinuation. Still, what ECMO represents is extraordinary. The ability to externally oxygenate blood and return it to the body. To give failing lungs and hearts a chance to rest. To give a patient time to heal. That is a testament to modern critical care. It's not just a machine. It's a lifeline. And though it's not a ventilator, it may be the only option left when a ventilator is no longer enough. So the next time you hear someone ask, is ECMO a ventilator? You'll know the answer. And more importantly, you'll understand why that distinction matters. Because in the ICU, where every second counts, knowing the difference between supporting a breath and replacing it can mean everything. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Have a nice day, and thanks for watching.